Hey everyone, it's Katie again here with another awesome mama that has moved from Arizona or moved to Arizona from another state. And today we have Carrie. Carrie is from Pennsylvania. Carrie, say hello to our audience. Hi guys. And where in Pennsylvania exactly are you from? Uh, the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area. So if you know the office, that's oh yeah, that's Scranton. Right on, right on. Cool. Um, why did you choose Arizona? Um, actually, we chose Arizona out of like the entire continental U.S. Um, partly, big big factor was the weather. We really mm -hmm. hate. Oh, well, I think it's cold after fifty degrees. Like, <laughs> just by growing up there, I really don't like the cold, and I don't like snow, and so that eliminated a good chunk of the country. Um, but also, we really liked just. I don't know. I think it's really beautiful here. Everyone I talk to, they're like, no, it's just dirt and tan. And I'm like, no, it's not. It's, there's so much lush, beautiful vegetation here. And there's so many outdoor things you can do. And at the time I was a vegan and there's a lot of, um, I'm not a vegan anymore. This, this little one here converted me back when I was pregnant. <laughs> and here, uh, same thing happened to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. But um, there was a lot of vegan options here and we, the economy was growing and the housing market was a lot cheaper a couple years ago. <laughs> it's yeah. really important. But um, it's still a really good economy here. And we just, we thought it'd be a really good place to raise our babies. And we thought it'd be, be happy here. And we were right. We really love it here. So that's awesome. I agree with you. I come from New Hampshire, as you know. And the mm -hmm. canyons out here are breathtaking to me. Just going through a drive through all the different spots where there are canyons. You know, obviously we have the Grand Canyon, but we have other smaller canyons too. <laughs> Um, those are my favorite. And then just driving through the mountains and seeing all the saguaro cactus all up the mountains. Oh, it's, it's my favorite too. Yeah, I think it's really just breathtakingly beautiful here. And a lot different than driving through Pennsylvania where you can't see anything but trees. Just right. trees everywhere. <laughs> right. It's very thick. Yeah, it's, it's not thick here. And, and when I moved here, tell me if this is a thing for you. When I moved here, I felt like the sky is so big. Did, yeah. did you feel like that? Like, oh my yeah. gosh, there's so much sky here. Yeah. As soon as like I got out of the East Coast and I was driving and the world was just so open. Yeah, that was really weird to me because yeah. you see so much sky. Whereas, you know, I grew up in a valley and there were mountains everywhere and there just wasn't that much sky. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same here. So about how long did it take you to move? Well... Not very long because we didn't, we didn't own a house or anything. We didn't even have our own apartment. We lived with my parents. Um, my parents have a double block and we lived on the other side. We hadn't, uh, Remus, he was only three months old, but we didn't move any furniture. We didn't, we just packed up what was really important to us in our Ford Focus and we drove across the country. So it took like three days to drive and probably like, I, I pack really early because I get excited. So. <laughs> Probably like I was packing here and there for like two weeks before that. And then we just threw everything in the car and we just, we just drove. And that was it. So yeah. once you made the decision that, okay, we're moving, it's Arizona, we're doing this. When did you start making your arrangements? Yeah. So we got married in July of uh, 2016 and we were planning to move to Arizona sometime that fall. And then I got pregnant with <laughs> Remus. And um, I had health care in Pennsylvania. I had an OBGYN yeah. in Pennsylvania. Uh, we had family in Pennsylvania. You know, we didn't really have anybody out here. So we kind of pumped the brakes. And I went through the pregnancy and I had Remus in the next July. And then we moved. So from when we decided to move here to when we actually moved here, it was over a year. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it was probably like two or three weeks from when I finally felt like, okay, I can move across the country. I feel good enough. You know, we've got, we got Remus's first shots. That was like a big thing to us to do. And so maybe like two or three weeks after I finally said to Noah, you know, I, I feel recovered enough from birth that I can get in the car and drive for three days. Mm -hmm. A couple weeks after that, we moved. Most people that I talk to that move from other states, it's about the same thing. It's about a year 
where oh. they, they made the decision and then they're kind of making the arrangements or things happen, surprises happen. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, they have to arrange for that. So that's, that's pretty typical with what I'm hearing. Oh. Did you make any, did you, I know you came over with a three month old. Did you make any special arrangements or anything no. like that? Noah's dad had moved here in the time that I was pregnant because he got a job here. And so we were just coming to stay with them until we found an apartment. So we kind of had like a place that we were and then a place to land. So it wasn't as bad as it could have been if we mm -hmm. had tried to, there was nobody here. Right. Um, so yeah, we did have somewhere to land with our, with our three month old. So no, and we had been traveling a lot by then. Um, we traveled across the country a couple times with my job. I was a freelance model, um, before, be right before we got married, right before I got pregnant. Um, so we were kind of used to just getting in the car and driving and we would stay at Airbnbs or we would camp or we would, you know, we did a lot of different stuff like that. So we were very used to just getting in the car and driving across the country <laughs> so it wasn't a big deal to us awesome so uh, you probably didn't make any special arrangements for child care or uh, did you check out <laughs> schools or was that on your mind i know you had a real young one coming across yeah so, <laughs> um, so hi betty so <laughs> we had um we had looked at schools and we realized that like the schools weren't that great in Arizona, like the public schools as far as like compared to the rest of the nation. But I saw that it was sort of an open enrollment thing here. And at the time I was thinking about homeschooling. I'm still kind of thinking about homeschooling. Um, he's still not in school right now, but you know, everything's crazy with COVID right now. Uh, but, right. So I wasn't like really, really concerned with it. I kind of figured we'd figure it out, you know, there's private options, there's charter options, there's homeschooling, there's, if, if I was really unhappy with the public school system by the time we got to that point, mm -hmm. I figured we'd figure it out. And now his first year of preschool, COVID has <laughs> happened and everything's crazy. So, right? it's still not figured out. <laughs> no one saw that coming. I certainly didn't. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest difference that you've discovered between your home state, so between Pennsylvania and Arizona? Um, I think like the bit for me, like it's a big lifestyle difference that we can just go outside all the time and we can enjoy making plans and doing things and it doesn't rain on those plans and it doesn't snow on those plans. Those <laughs> plans just keep on happening <laughs> because it's fine, you know, and that, I mean, always where I was growing up, it's like, is it going to rain? Is it going to snow? Is it going to be too cold? It's going to be too hot. And like, now it's just always gorgeous out. We can, it's really freeing to me that we can just go and do whatever we want more or less whenever we want. It's really hot in the summer, but. But at least it's, it's predictable. Like you said, though, at least you can pretty much say, okay, today's going to be sunny <laughs> and you're usually yeah. right. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, is there a part of town that's most like your home state in terms of maybe the people or sports team or scenery or just a general feel? Honestly, no. Um, I haven't really seen anything anywhere on the West Coast that makes me think of, of home. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of okay with that because I didn't really love where I grew up. And I don't really love it now, so I'm kind of happy that everything's really different here. Like, we wanted a change. We, we wanted to come somewhere different and new, so. But yeah, no. I can't really think of anything that really reminds me that. Even, like, I know there's some, like, Philly cheesesteak places, and if you're really from Philly, you know that they're not really Philly cheesesteak. <laughs> oh, right, right. And, like, <laughs> yeah, the closest, the closest I get is, like, some pizza places, but they're not the same. It's different. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And I'm snobby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm snobby with my seafood. I totally get it. It's just yep. it's not real Maine lobster here. It may look like Maine lobster, but <laughs> <laughs> totally get it. Um, what do you wish you knew before you moved here that you know now? Hmm. 
Um, I guess really the only thing is that, like, I wish I knew how hard it was going to be to have little kids and not have anybody. Mm. Like, he was only three months old. He wasn't that difficult yet. <laughs> yeah. And as much as, like, I was ready to come out here and I don't want to go back to Pennsylvania, I don't want to live there, um, there have definitely been times where I've been like, why don't we have anybody out here? You know, I wish I knew how hard it was to do it without a support system, without having anybody in person to call and be like, I can't, I can't do this. I need help. Or just the car, like we've had, we've always had one car. So if something goes wrong with the car, everything's wrong. Like we can't go anywhere, you know, Right. or we had this really freak accident with our, with our sink and it ended up getting moldy. We didn't have anywhere to go. You know, mm -hmm. we had to go get like an, uh, like a hotel room because we just don't have anybody here doctor's appointments like the whole thing we only have it's just me and my husband so that's right. been really hard i've started with this group to make friends and i i have somebody now that i can call but i didn't have that for a long time and it was really difficult was yeah really difficult. No, i feel you same here um i didn't have anybody here when i had my son also um, my mom ended up moving here when he was he was almost six years old so he was five and yeah. by then it's easy, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I totally, totally get it. And I love that you brought up, you know, joining mom's groups. Mom Nation is a big one here in Arizona um, because then you can connect with people who are, you know, like-minded, who maybe live near you, maybe have kids the same age and you guys can help each other out, which is really nice. Yeah, it was especially hard when I was pregnant with Nico and he, um, he kind of gave us a good scare when I was like 37 weeks pregnant that I was going into labor and my mom was planning on coming out here when I was like 39 weeks, but she wasn't here yet. And there was nobody else and nobody to stay with our son, our older son. And like, we had people getting on planes trying to get here to, to help us because it was looking like I wasn't leaving the hospital. I was having a baby and there was nobody to be with Remus. It was not a good time. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's stressful. And that's not the kind of stress you need at that moment. No. Thankfully, um, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. He wasn't ready. And my mom got here and everything ended up okay. And, you know, I had him a couple. It was like I was almost 40 weeks. So it was like two weeks later. Um, but, yeah, that could have been a lot worse if they didn't let me go home. <laughs> yeah. Because we one of my husband's work friends that we didn't really know that well, we just were kind of like, can we just drop our son off? Cause we don't know, we don't know what to do. I might be going into labor and like, we don't have anybody yet. So babies don't like plans. Yeah. <laughs> there no, was no they don't care about plans at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Last question. Any advice that you'd like to offer for families that are looking to move to Arizona from Pennsylvania? Um, first do it. I know I'm talking about like how hard it was with little kids, but it's also been really rewarding and we love it here. I, I don't think I've met somebody who moved here that didn't end up loving it here. Um, just personally, I'm sure there are people who decide not to stay, but it's, it's really an amazing place to live. It's really an amazing place for families. That's, that's the one really big thing here. Like there's all these places to go and there's all these activities to do and it's super family friendly. There's so many other families here. And I know it's not like that back where I'm from, you know, we don't have the ideal museum and the children's museum and all the parks and the, the all the outdoor recreation and the, you know, giggles like the indoor play places. I don't think those exist in Pennsylvania. At least I never knew that. <laughs> yeah. Same in New Hampshire. Um, yeah. So just, just that alone is enough for me to, to have moved here and stay here. And I didn't even know that stuff was here when we moved. So definitely do it, but just know that there's going to be, if you don't have a support system, you have to get one. Like, like I said, I finally met a really good mom through this group and we've really supported each other and helped each other out. She actually has family here, but, um, she's been like unbelievable to have around to finally have somebody that like I can call if we need help with something, you know? Mm -hmm. So come, but find, find people. You need people. <laughs> Well, that's awesome though, because on a social level, like when, once we have kids, like kids are our life, right? So our social lives go out the door. So it's nice that you were able to connect with somebody and still, and you get that like adult interaction too. Like, oh my gosh, another adult to speak to. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and she parents a lot like me, and she has a three-year-old too. So our our schedules have meshed really well. So it's really good to have her. Awesome. Awesome, Carrie. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Yeah, thank you. All right. Bye. Bye.